we are in this for relationships and to help our clients succeed. In fact, our slogan is we work together so you succeed. If our clients are not successful, we're not, right? So I'm not in the loan to own business. I'm in the loan to have a lot of loan businesses. So if you can make money on your project, you'll come back, right? So that's really the focus. And that's similar on our private investor side. Like I get the best job in the world, Jay, because I get to help private passive investors make a lot of money. I get to help fix and flippers make a lot of money. I get to make money doing that. It's really a win, win, win. Um, so I say what makes us different is we're highly focused on client success and we're small, nimble, and we're investors ourselves. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Welcome to another amazing episode of Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor, your host, also known as the Private Money Authority. And this is the show where we talk about how to raise money for your real estate deals without ever having to ask for money. Well, my guest today has actually raised $130 million for his hard money fund. And yes, believe it or not, my special guest today is a hard money lender. Why in the world would I have a hard money lender on the Raising Private Money show? Well, here's the reason. You need to have as many relationships in place as you can. So if by chance you're running short on private money from your individual real estate lenders, then you need a relationship to where you can go get the money very, very quickly. Well, my guest, after college, he spent two years working with Wall Street as a mortgage bond analyst before leaving to work in real estate financing for investors like you full time. Well, up to date, he has closed over 2,200 transactions as a buyer or a seller or as a hard money lender. Now, he currently manages multiple mortgage funds with more than $750 million in closed loans. In addition to that, he has spent two decades as a real estate investor himself and 16 years in real estate lending. In addition, he is the author of two books, 45 Day Investor, and his most recent book that just got published hot off the press is Fund Your Flip. He's also a frequent speaker, and he's been quoted in all kinds of publications, such as the Las Vegas Review Journal, the Denver Post, Yahoo Real Estate and many others. Also included in that list is Forbes. In just a moment, you're going to meet my very special guest, Kevin Amelsh, right after this. Well, welcome to the show, Kevin. So excited to have you. Jay, what an intro. Thank you so much for having me on here. I'm super excited to, to have this interview with you. Absolutely. Well, I'm excited to have this interview with you because myself and all my listeners want you to show me the money. Let's right? do it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you've been real estate investing a long time, uh, just like myself, yeah. but you decided to focus and specialize now for over 16 years in lending for real estate investors. Why did you decide to focus in on this area? Yeah, I got started in investing in real estate at a super young age and through the process, I didn't have money. I didn't have credit. Really, I was in college. So uh, through that process, I learned that the creativity is what is so special about real estate as an industry and being able to you know, acquire properties with little or none of your own money. Um, but the thing about that, Jay, is when you are negotiating your deals, you're making your offers, even down to the words you choose to use when you're in someone's living room. It has everything to do with the financing. How you fund the project is the structure of the deal. And I love deal structures. I like to, like to hunt and put deals together. So I just started focusing in on the financing side of real estate, started raising private money in 2016. 
if you could believe uh, in 2006, I'm sorry, 2006, right before the crash. That's when I got started, if you could believe it. Um, and I just fell in love with that side of the business. So here we are now, four funds. And I know you mentioned 130 million. It's actually a bit old, that bio. We're over $160 million in uh, capital right now. That's wonderful. Well, uh, you mentioned being able to close quickly and being able to move quickly. Um, there's a saying I picked up from a friend of mine years ago, and that is you can't make money in first gear. You can't make money and, you know, and you're not moving fast. Um, for example, I just bought an oceanfront condominium here in Atlantic Beach, North Carolina, closed on it just two, three weeks ago. Um, the, the, uh, after repaired value, which we're actually putting it on the market right now, this week, in fact, it went on the market yesterday and we were listing that property for $595,000. I only had to do 11,000 in uh rehab interior paint. That wasn't even a rehab. And, uh, and listen, Kevin, I bought that property for only 425,000 selling it for 595. Hardly had to touch it. But there's only one reason why I was able to get that deal. And that's because I made an offer that I can close in seven days. He had higher offers, but they was going to take them, you know, uh, 30 days or more to close. And he had two big motivations. It was an inherited property. And in addition to that, it was going to the courthouse steps in foreclosure sale in like 10 days uh, from the time we spoke to him. So we closed that deal in seven days. And, and so that's a big point right there that you just made. You got to be able to offer fast closings if, you know, or you're going to miss out on a lot of deals. No, oh, totally. I, I, I could not agree more. And, and you sounds like you came in with cash. Maybe it was private money, which we're going to talk a lot about today. Uh, but there's lots of different ways you could structure deals to close fast. So closing in seven days sounds intimidating, especially to a newer investor. Um, but look, it's, it's, it's re real. I mean, that, that is a real thing. You can close in seven days. Yes. When, even when you're new, yes. Even if it's your very first deal. Yeah. Um, it actually was private money from an individual. So I've got 47 human beings in <laughs> individuals <laughs> that are funding our, our real estate deals. And, um, and some of my best friends in the world, uh, like yourself are hard money lenders. You know, they've, they've got their, their fund as well that they loan out. So yes, I'm glad you make the point um, fast. So so let's dig into your fund. It's called the Pine Financial Group, and and so at Pine Financial Group, first of all, what type of and and the website by the way is pinefinancialgroup.com. Right. Pine like a pine tree. By the way, I live here in Eastern North Carolina. And we have got pine trees like out the kazoo. Yeah. How, how did you How did you come up with the name for your of your company, Pine Financial Group? Maybe we should expand there. Um, so we have pine trees in Colorado, also maybe not quite as big or green as what you experienced, but we have we have a uh, Colorado pine trees and. So I wanted something that was special to me. Like I, I'm a native of Colorado, I grew up here, love this state. So I wanted something that somewhat resembled the state, but here's what's funny, Jay. It's not just that because I could do mile high or I could do mountain, Rocky mountain, something right. But I, I wanted to find something that I could get a domain for and Pine Financial Group was available. So that's the name of the company. <laughs> well, in other words, you sort of had to back into that name, right? So uh, what type of lending uh, or loans does Pine Financial Group do? Yeah, so we're we are a short term value add bridge lender. So you use the term hard money. I absolutely agree. It is a hard money lender. Um, you know, there's organizations out there trying to change that term a little bit. But you and I agree. We've been doing this a long time, Jay. It's it's hard money. Um, so think about your fix and flips or your burr strategies. We could talk about what that is if your listener doesn't know. But anytime you're going to add value to a project and then either resell it or refinance and pay off the loan, we are interested in those types of uh, deals like your condo deal, right? You just add yeah, a little absolutely. bit to it I mean, and then it adds value, right? Absolutely. I, um, um, we did $11,000. Um, I mean, it, it looked good, but it didn't look great, but now it looks great. And, you know, so we, we closed on it, purchased it less than a month ago. 
and it goes active this Friday. It's probably going to be under contract um, this coming weekend. So probably going to be in and out of this $600,000 condo in less than 90 days. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, that is the perfect in and out type of transaction. We don't typically see those, Jay. To be honest with you, we're seeing hey, look, much larger. I typically don't, I typically don't see those. Oh, yeah, you right? don't, yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> but we're, we're looking at like adding adding a suite or you know pop in a top or some like major value add and especially in a market like we're in now with with low inventory it's pretty much across the country right it's hard to to find projects it's it's um, there's just not a lot to choose from which creates a little bit of a challenge for fix and flippers so we're seeing you're paying full price when you buy it especially if it's M mls right i believe that but you could still fix and flip and make a ton of money. You just got to figure out where to add the value. True. Now, did I hear you just say pop a top? <laughs> Is that what you not you don't call it that in North Carolina? I don't even know, I don't even know what pop a top okay, means. That's, unless you're uh, like you know popping a soda pop top. Yeah, you're <laughs> you're popping the top of the roof, right? And you're going you're building a second story on an existing home. Um, so I've just, never just, uh, popped. A I've never popped a top in my life. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's what we call them here in Denver. <laughs> so, um, in fact, I don't even know anybody that's popped a top, and I've done over 500 single-family rehabs myself. So maybe we should take a look at popping a top. You know, maybe what kind of can. property... What kind of property would you want to pop a top for? So if you're looking at, so in the, some of the older neighborhoods in Denver, and it's probably similar for where you're at, but you have these little five, 5,500 square foot lots and they just stack them in, right? It's like a grid. Um, so it's very difficult to add square footage unless you're finishing a basement or you're going up. So zoned for two stories, we're seeing a lot of people add a second story because you can't go out the back, which would be obviously much, much cheaper. But if there's not enough room, not enough space on that on that project, you either have to go up or sometimes we'll see them dig basements out to create an actual legitimate basement they could finish. So those are those are two of the strategy, strategies we're seeing when there's not enough land or not enough space to mm. add uh, an addition. Okay, that makes sense. I understand. Um, so as far as length of notes, so so your 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 box or your criteria more or less that your company's interested in funding are properties that the um real estate investor is going to make uh better add value to it and it's going to be short term so like for instance myself our you know i do so many deals and I, and i've got i've got our own crews i do business with general contractors more than one of them but our average deal, so I'm going to tell you our average deal in length of time and see how it sort of marries up okay. with Pine with Pine Financial Group. So I'll buy a house that needs renovations and it may sit there for three months before we even start the work because we're like backlogged. I got my general contractors backed up. The crews are backed up. It might be three months before it even starts. And then the average renovation project in my area here, I mean, our median price is like 350,000. It's not California, you know, but our average renovation is on the low end, on the low end. Well, the 11,000, that's an anomaly. That's, don't a, even yeah, that's the don't, really don't low even, end. <laughs> don't, don't even count that. The average low end is going to be these days at least 30 or $40,000 on the low end. High end typically is going to max out around seventy, maybe eighty thousand dollars. So on average, it's going to take round figures about three months for us to do a, a renovation. So it sat there for three months. Renovations taken three months. Now I got it for six months. Might be seven months. Now we go in the multiple listing service. We have no inventory here in our area. I mean, if you've got it priced right and you put it in the, the multiple listing service, you're going to be under contract in less than a week. If you're not under contract in less than a week, you're overpriced. Right. Um, or you shouldn't have bought it in the location it's in or whatever. So let's say we go into contract. Well, typical closing is going to be 45 days. So now I'm like in it eight and a half months, cash out. So typically we're going to be in and out, even if it sits there for three months without touching it, 
within nine months or less. Um, so what for, for these value add loans that you're talking about, uh, what's the length of the note typically? That's a good question. I love how you describe that to me and walk me through like the timeline. So our loan is nine months. I've been doing nine months since day one. I started Pine Financial in 2008. I know I mentioned I was raising money in 2006, but I didn't actually start this company until 08. And from day one, we would do a nine month loan. Now, back then, Jay, the hard money lenders would only go six months because they wanted extension fees and they wanted all of this. We, we carved out a little niche with that simple strategy to, to extend to nine months out of the gate. Now, we don't see properties sitting for three months before any construction started. That's not normal here. It's usually, you know, within a week or two, we're already seeing the demo crew go in. Um, so our average loan payoff is five, five and a half months, something like that. Now we're doing, we're seeing much bigger rehab. So an $80,000 remodel is probably closer to average than on a high end. Um, we'll see hundred, hundred twenty thousand dollars remodel projects regularly. Yeah. Well, and I did one last year or was it this year? Doesn't matter. I did one. Um, and I mean, it was, it was the house that just kept on taking it didn't get <laughs> the money pit. You remember that movie? <laughs> yeah, just kept on taking. And so, and of course I've never had a renovation project come in on budget ever, well, of course not, sure. ever. They never come in on budget. Right. Uh, you might get close, you might get close, but anyway, so this renovation project started out at around 150,000 wow, renovation big. project, which was pretty big. And, um, after much chagrin, I don't know if y'all talk about chagrin up in Colorado or not, but anyway, after much, uh, sweat and tears, we finally finished that renovation project, um, at $180,000. But the good news is we bought it right. Thank goodness. We bought it right. And we still made over a hundred thousand dollars in profit, but we should have made a lot more money than that. So your length of your note since day one has been nine months. Mm -hmm. Um, what makes Pine Financial Group different for not your investors that are investing in your fund? We'll talk about that. But what makes it different for the borrower, the rehabber, uh, that they want to come to Pine Financial Group instead of XYZ hard money lender? Yeah, I mean, we're client focused. This is very different than a lot of the industry. Um, we are in this for relationships and to help our clients succeed. In fact, our slogan is we work together so you succeed. If our clients are not successful, we're not, right? So I'm not in the loan to own business. I'm in the loan to have a lot of loan businesses. So if you can make money on your project, you'll come back, right? So that's really the focus. And that's similar on our private investor side. Like I get the best job in the world, Jay, because I get to help Private passive investors make a lot of money. I get to help fix and flippers make a lot of money. I get to make money doing that. It's really a win, win, win. Um, so I'd say what makes us different is we're highly focused on client success and we're small, nimble, and we're investors ourselves. Yeah. Well, at the end of the day, that's pretty much what it comes down to when you're a service provider. And that is how well do you take care of your customers? That's right. Right. Um, you know, fast fundings, fast answers. What does your underwriting process look like? So for example, let's say, um, and when I say, what's it look like? I'm not talking about what is your underwriting criteria? That's not my question. What I'm asking is, uh, let's say Jay Connor has got a deal under contract. No, no, no. Let's back up. Let's back up. Let's say Jay Connor does not know you. And Jay Connor has reached out to Pine Financial Group and I want to be one of your customers. I want to experience your amazing customer service journey experience. What is the, how, how does a, how does, how does a Jay Connor, how does an individual that wants to be a borrower of Pine Financial Group, um, what's the application process look like? Uh, how are, how are they set up? Is it a line of credit? Is everything one-offs? Um, yeah. what's that look like? Good question. So first thing I'm going to do when I hear you say that is I'm going to put my arm around you, Jay, and we're going to walk on this path together, right? We're a team here. Um, but the real answer to your question is we want you to get pre-approved first, because look, 
when you're out there making offers, sitting, sending in contracts or LOIs, um, you want to know that you have the money behind you. And it's totally free, so it'd be silly not to. So it'd be to get a pre-approval, and then we could send you loan commitment letters. Now, our loan commitment letter is maybe a little bit different than some of the others you've seen in that it's very general and simple. So it doesn't have a property address. It doesn't have a loan amount. It doesn't have any of that. And the reason we do it that way is because we know it might take you 30 offers, maybe more, to get one high quality project, right? So I want you to be able to make offer over, you know, offer, offer, offer over and over and over again without coming back and requesting new commitment letters each and every time. So it just makes it simple for both of us. Now, once you get a project under contract, um, then you that's when we really start working together, right? So you'd send in the contract, send in your scope of work, which is basically just a breakdown of your plan and your budget. And then we would get the process started. We do the valuation from there. We start collecting all of our underwriting documents. Um, sounds like you don't want me to go into too much detail there, but it's real simple. Um, one year tax return, one bank statement, and some disclosures is pretty much what it is. Um, and then we just work together all the way up until the closing date. Heck, we work together after the closing date. Need some advice, need a little support. We're always here. There you go. Wonderful. And so you got the pre-approval. And, and by the way, you just said something very interesting. And I'll tell you why it's interesting. So you just said, you know, I don't want you out there, you know, making offers and you don't have the money lined up. So let's, let's uh, digress for a second. You know what drives me crazy, Kevin? I mean, it drives me absolute crazy. I want to throw up. I think you probably know what I, I'm getting I ready to I can't wait to hear it, but I think I know. Yes. Drives me stupid crazy. These educators on the platform around the country that are, you know, teaching real estate investors, mostly newbies, mostly newbies. And here's what they say, quote unquote, oh, just get the deal under contract. The money will show up. You ever heard that, Kevin? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I hear this all the time, Jay. And I, you and I are definitely going to agree on this one. It drives me absolutely crazy. Now, is it possible to go find the money and line it up after you're under contract? Sure. Absolutely. It's possible. Is it possible that you don't find the money? Yeah, that's possible also. So I, I agree. I think you should have at least some idea, at least some idea of where the money is going to come from before you're making offers. Well, and the sad thing is, uh, these same people, they'll say, oh, if the, if it's a good deal, the money follows the good deals, the money follows the good deals. And, and, and I want to say, where is the money going to come from? Is it just like going to sort of rain out of clouds or something, you know? And I was, I had, a I was a guest on a podcast, uh, not too long ago. And the host and I were having this very same conversation that you and I are having. And, it, and I said, why do they say that? Why, why do they, why do they say that? And he says, Jay, I can tell you why they say that. I said, why? He says, because they're selling a course on how to get deals under contract and how to find deals. And they're not going to teach them where the money comes from. So they say, just get the deal under contract. So, you know, the, the, we agree on this, Kevin, the worst time in the world to be looking for money to find your deal is when you need it for yep. a deal. <laughs> yep. It reminds me of, you, you've seen the movie or read the book, The Secret, Jay, I'm sure. Oh, absolutely. Okay. So I absolutely love that concept and I love that movie and I love that book and um, all, all of those things because I, I think it's real. I really do believe in the law of attraction. And the one thing that that book is missing is that you have to actually do something. <laughs> I mean, you could, you could uh, do all the affirmations in the world, but if you don't take at least some action, that goal is not going to just appear. So I, I, I love the secret and you have to take action. Yes. Well, speaking of taking action, let's give our listeners some action. And that is how can they connect with Kevin, you, uh, Amosh and your team and find out about getting pre-approved with Pine Financial Group. Yeah, I'm glad you're saying that. I, and I should say this, we on the lending side, because there's risk in real estate lending, we are pretty focused geographically. So we're in Colorado, Minnesota, Washington, DC, and in Wisconsin. So those are our four markets. I just want to be very clear 
on that. We, we bring in private capital from investors from all over the country, but if we're talking about loaning it out, we're geographically focused so that we could really keep our eye on the asset. Um, to, get, to answer your question, get a hold of me. The best way is uh, the website. It's pinefinancialgroup.com. Again, it's pinefinancialgroup.com. And then on the other side of your business, um, you can't lend it out until you've got your investors that have, in, have invested in the fund that you and your team are managing. And so let's speak to that group of people for a couple of minutes. Um, who would want to invest in your fund and why would they want to invest in your fund? Yeah, look, if you believe in real estate as an asset class, a good, you know, piece to your portfolio, but you don't want the tenants and the toilets and the tantrums from tenants or contractors, um, it might be a, a good idea to look at some passive type of investments. Now, if you're looking at passive real estate investments, there's really two. You could go debt or equity. Now, equity is those syndications that we hear about. A lot of the private money, people raising private money are investing it grouping it together and investing it into a deal. So that would be a syndication, which can be fantastic, just a little bit riskier. It's the lowest on the capital stack. It's the last, the last to get paid back. Now, if you're going on the debt side, first position loans get paid back before anybody else with the exception of super liens like HOAs and taxes. But but the debt side is much safer, much more stable, much more predictable. Um, so that's what we do. And it's... Uh, I forget, I forget the question exactly here, Jay, but who would we want to do? Who would we be targeting here? Anybody that wants a passive investment that has some stability and you like real estate as an asset class. So this is a great way to diversify and get stability into a portfolio. Perfect. And is there a minimum amount for them to invest? Yeah. So that's a good question because we have two funds right now. One of them is getting our final approval with the SEC. So once that is approved, that's going to be open to non-accredited investors. So that's very different than what you hear other lenders doing. Now we're going through a much more rigorous process to be able to do that. Um, there's a lot of audited financials, lots of reporting to the government, all of those things. Um, but that's really cool if you want to get involved and you're not yet accredited. And that's a $10,000 minimum to answer your question. The other one does pay a slightly higher return because we're sharing in the profits. Um, you have to be accredited for that one. And it's a $100,000 minimum. All more, right. Yeah, more information at pinefinancialgroup.com. And then I'm, I'm happy to talk to you too. Awesome. Well, Kevin, thank you so much for joining us here on the show. Uh, any final thoughts or advice you'd like to share? Yeah, I thought we were going to get a little bit more into the private money side because I've been able, I've had some success raising that. But this, so this would be, I would say this, if you're out there trying to raise private money, it, it is possible, okay? When you're going to focus on that and your, your investor pitches, if you want to call it that, or you're sitting down, um, make sure that it's not really a sales process. You're trying to build a relationship here. So focus on the relationship before the ask for money. And two, when you are talking about the money, it's return, uh, return of capital, not return on capital. Okay. Investors want to make sure that you're going to keep their money safe. Excellent advice, Kevin. Thank you so much for joining me, Kevin. God bless you. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me on the phone or on the phone, on the, on the podcast. I had a great time, Jay. Thank you so much. You got it. Well, there you have it. Another amazing episode of raising private money. So glad you decided to join us. Be sure and not miss out on upcoming episodes because we always have fantastic guests. If you happen to be watching on YouTube, be sure to subscribe and re click that bell. So you get notified. And if you're listening on uh, iTunes or any of your other favorite platforms for podcasts, be sure to follow so you don't miss out. I look forward to seeing you right here on the next episode of Raising Private Money with Jay Connor. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jayconner.com slash money guide. That's jconner.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jayconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.